Are dream characters conscious, as in with intentionality and point of view? Believe it or not, it's been studied. Now, granted, this is a difficult question because we're getting into some metaphysical issues here. How can I know for sure that someone else is actually conscious the way I am? This is the problem of other minds. The traditional solution to this problem has been the analogical argument. It goes like this. I have a mind. I know from experience that my mental states cause my behavior. Other people behave similarly to me. Therefore, by analogy, their behavior has the same type of cause as my behavior, which are mental states. Therefore, other people have minds. Ordinary people are most likely to hold to an argument like this. It seems like common sense. This argument is used for people we experience in waking life, but it can also be used for people we experience in dreams. Some of them behave similarly to myself. By analogy, their behavior has the same type of cause as me, which are mental states. If this argument can be used for believing people in waking life are conscious, it seems it can also be used to argue that at least some of the people in dreams are conscious. We could say this doesn't prove the people we experience in dreams are conscious, but then again, we can say the same thing about the people we experience in waking life. Can you prove you are self-aware? That's a difficult question, Dr. Tag. Can you prove that you are? When it comes to the problem of other minds, the analogical argument is convincing for many, but this solution of the problem has lost ground in modern philosophy because it is an inductive generalization based on only one case, which is thought to be unacceptable. Widespread dissatisfaction with this view has led philosophers to make an abductive argument for other minds by holding them to be theoretical entities. The guiding thought is that the mental states of others are what cause them to behave as they do. So the inference to their having minds is one based on that being the best explanation for the way they behave. This is known as an inference to the best explanation, though it seems to avoid some of the difficulties of the previous solution. As before, this argument seems to apply to people in dreams just as much as it applies to people in waking life. Dr. Patrick McNamara, a neurologist from Boston University, states, Beginning with the seminal work of Paul Foley and Stephen LeBerge, Experimental investigations of non-self characters in lucid dreams have shown that their cognitive abilities are generally on a par with people in waking life. They can talk reasonably well, anticipate the dreamer's intentions and actions, and can even perform some complicated motor and cognitive tasks and so on. It was the opinion of Tholi, as far as I can tell, that some characters that are encountered in lucid dreams had a consciousness of their own, independent of the dream ego, that is, they evidenced intentional states that appeared to operate independently of the dreamer. So there was a researcher named Paul Tholey who actually researched this back in the 80s. And what he did is he took a bunch of lucid dreamers and had them do their thing, do the lucid dreams, and ask the characters that they encountered there questions to determine whether or not those characters had some kind of consciousness. It, actually yielded some really interesting results. The study Dr. Goodwin is referring to is Consciousness and Abilities of Dream Characters Observed During Lucid Dreaming by Paul Tholey. In this study, dream characters were shown to successfully draw or write, to name unknown words, to find rhyme words, and to make verses. However, they performed poorly on arithmetic problems. The researchers concluded, nothing contradicts them being conscious and that we should treat them as rational beings in lucid dream therapy. Tholey's study was replicated by different researchers and they observed the same results as before. This time, they focused more so on arithmetic problem solving. Surprisingly, dream characters are better at multiplication and division than addition and subtraction. Other studies have replicated this method for testing the mental abilities of dream characters and have gone on to show that they are surprisingly creative and can even provide plausible creative advice to the dreamer. So in general, they did behave as if they had intentionality, memory, emotions of their own. So it's a pretty interesting result. That if that doesn't bother you, you haven't thought about it enough. <laughs> because it's really kind of spooky if you think about it. Something in there is conjuring up all these different consciousnesses 
that are not yours and they have their own set of knowledge base. One can insist that this conclusion cannot be checked up on, so there's no way to be sure that people in dreams are conscious. However, that sword cuts both ways. That point applies to people in waking life as well. If one is rational to believe that people in waking life are conscious, even though it cannot be checked up on, then that intuition can be applied to people in dreams. But as noted in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy's most recent entry on other minds, a growing approach to this problem is that we don't need arguments, because we have perceptual knowledge of other minds. The guiding thought is that our knowledge of other minds is as direct and immediate as our knowledge of objects. As Max Shaler points out, we believe ourselves to be directly acquainted with another person's joy in his laughter, with his sorrow and pain in his tears, with his shame in his blushing. As seen with every other solution to the problem of other minds so far, this too can be applied to people in dreams. Some people, such as Dr. Claire Johnson, have had such profound experiences with people in dreams. The question isn't whether dream characters are conscious, but how conscious are they? And I'm going to tell you uh, one of my lucid dreams where I met a dream figure which re who really seemed to be autonomous. You know, she seemed extremely conscious and she looked at me with like a really conscious gaze. And I was like, okay. So she was an amazing, very powerful lucid dream figure. So if you see a dream figure who seems particularly conscious, it's worth talking to them. It's worth interacting with them. They might have a big message for you. Dr. McNamara notes, dream characters seem to exhibit all the marks of mentality in real independent beings. Now, because the dreamer is aware that he or she is dreaming, we cannot say that he or she accepts the independent status of the non-self characters due to the loss of reflective analytical thinking that supposedly characterizes ordinary non-lucid dreams. The so-called reality-checking functions of the prefrontal cortex are available to the dreamer in a lucid dream. His judgment that a dream character is a kind of real being, therefore, cannot be due to lack of insight. This idea that we can have direct knowledge of the minds of people in dreams gets even more interesting when we examine Paul Tholey's alternative technique. Tholey states, To investigate whether dream characters have a consciousness of their own, we also developed a method that involves the ego core of the dream ego leaving its own body and entering into the body of another dream character. By this method, the dream ego is believed to experience directly the consciousness of another dream character, especially the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of the other dream character." End quote. So if the dreamer is able to experience what it is like to be that character, then that implies there is something it is like to be that character, which would mean that dream character is conscious. Before I respond to some objections, I will briefly lay out two alternative arguments that at least some dream characters are conscious. The first alternative argument is that dream characters are you. You are undoubtedly conscious, so if the characters in your dreams are you, then they must be conscious, since you are conscious. Malkovich? Malkovich, Malkovich. Malkovich, Malkovich. Malkovich, 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 Malkovich. The second alternative argument is that you are a dream character. You are undoubtedly conscious. So if you are a character in a dream, then it must be the case that at least some dream characters are conscious, since you are conscious. Well, dreams, they feel real while we're in them, right? It's only when we wake up that we realize something was actually strange. Let me ask you a question. You, you never really remember the beginning of a dream, do you? You always wind up right in the middle of what's going on. I guess, yeah. So how did we end up here? Well, we just came from the, uh... Think about it, Ariadne. How did you get here? Where are you right now? We're dreaming. You're actually in the middle of the workshop right now, sleeping. This is your first lesson in shared dreaming. Stay calm. I reject the first argument, 
because I do not believe dream characters are you, but rather they are parts of you. The second argument, which holds you are a dream character, is an idea that I believe can help conceptualize certain forms of idealism, and may actually provide answers to fundamental philosophical and scientific questions. That is a topic I will have to explore in another video. For now, I will answer some common objections to the idea that dream characters are conscious. In July of 1989, Paul Tholey and Stephen LeBerge had a conversation on the nature of dream characters. When talking about whether they were conscious, Paul Tholey said, but nothing that happens here proves that Stephen has a consciousness or that Bridget has a consciousness. Any proof of that would be metaphysical. You can act exactly the same way as the dream figures. You have your own perspectives, you have your own memory, and your own thinking. Why should I claim that dream figures don't have a consciousness and at the same time claim that you have one? Stephen the Baird replied, I have a brain. You have a brain. We each have a brain. But dream figures have no brains, except one, the one of the dreamer. The problem with this reply by Stephen LeBerge is that it rests on a logical fallacy known as denying the antecedent. We make correlations of what happens in the brain with mental events. Hence, LeBerge claims, if there's a brain, then there's mentality. There is no brain, therefore, there is no mentality. This is an invalid argument. The conclusion does not follow logically from the premises. It's like saying, if I'm in London, then I'm in England. I'm not in London, therefore, I'm not in England. Just because someone is not in London, that does not mean they're not in England. And likewise, just because dream characters assumedly have no brains, it does not follow logically that therefore they're not conscious. Invalid arguments against the consciousness of dream characters are quite common, as I'll explain more. But another common objection that's often raised is based on a confusion between what is imaginary and experiential. When asked if dream characters are conscious, Paul King says, probably not any more than the characters in a novel are separately conscious in the mind of the novel's author. What King is not realizing is that characters in a novel are something we merely think about and imagine. When you imagine something, you don't see, touch, or feel it. You only have an idea of it. When you experience something, you do see, touch, and feel it. And that's what it means to be experiential, involving or based on experience. So characters in a novel are imaginary, which is different from dream characters, which are experiential, just like people in waking life. A popular lucid dreaming website called World of Lucid Dreaming has a section called Ask the Experts in which users submit questions to so-called experts. When asked, why do some people you meet in lucid dreams have a self-awareness separate from your own? Two of these experts responded. The first is Daniel Love, and he answers that, I would caution jumping too quickly to the conclusion that they possess an independent self-awareness. My response to this will vary depending on what exactly he means by independent, but one thing I would note is that I do believe their self-awareness is dependent on your own consciousness. Though these people in dreams behave autonomously, their existence is still dependent on our existence. So in that sense, their self-awareness is dependent rather than independent, and in that case, there wouldn't be anything for Daniel Love to be concerned about. The second response comes from Rebecca Turner, who states, My perception is that your dream characters only seem self-aware, but they are not actually self-aware. Based on our current understanding, to assume that a dream character has a separate consciousness of your own implies that their consciousness resides somewhere beyond your awareness. But where is that? My first response to this is that someone could say the same thing about people in waking life. Someone could say that their perception is that people in waking life only seem self-aware, but are not actually self-aware. How would she respond then? She would more likely than not have to use a solution to the problem of other minds to support that people in waking life are conscious. But as shown before, those same solutions can be applied to people in dreams as well. My second response, which answers her question at the end, is that I do not believe these dream characters exist beyond your awareness. They are subsumed by your consciousness, so they are essentially within you. And with that point, both of these concerns and objections to dream characters being conscious have been dissolved. Robert Lanza brings up a common objection heard from ordinary people in conversations about this, and it's that one reason dreams are dismissed is because they end when we wake. Lanza's rebuttal 
is that the duration of the experience is a poor reason to diminish it. Certainly we don't think our experience of day-to-day -day life is less real because it supposedly ends when we die. It's true we don't remember events in our dreams as well as we do when those occurring in waking hours, but that Alzheimer's patients have little memory of events does not mean their experience is any less real. So just because dream characters seem to come and go, or memories about them can be hazy, it does not follow logically that therefore they are not conscious. Other common objections that are brought up are how this idea of them being conscious is too strange, or sometimes people will note that we're able to control them by thinking about them. The problem with these objections is the same as most of the objections seen before. Just because it seems strange for dream characters to be conscious, it does not follow logically that therefore they are not conscious. And if some being appeared on earth that was somehow able to control you, you wouldn't say that therefore you haven't been conscious this whole time. Clearly I will not be able to address all objections against the idea of dream characters being conscious, but as demonstrated in this video, most objections apply to people in waking life as well, and are based on invalid arguments and misunderstandings between what is imaginary and experiential. In conclusion, I do not claim to have proven that people in dreams are conscious, but I do think we have just about as much reason to believe people in dreams are conscious as we do to believe people in waking life are conscious. Dream characters being conscious fits with our intuition. When we're actually experiencing them, we are convinced that we're talking to actual conscious beings just like when we are experiencing people in waking life. It's only later when the dream is over that many conclude these people weren't actually conscious, but as noted, that conclusion is usually based on invalid logic. Though believing some people in dreams are conscious may seem strange, it's a belief that fits well with the evidence and is more consistent than arbitrarily rejecting our intuitions. And as hinted, if they are conscious, then this may be a clue as to the origin of our own consciousness.